So, hello and welcome. My name's Steve the Bell, and today I'm speaking with Alexandra Wenman on the Intergalactic Elohim. Well, Alex is a holistic therapist, intuitive channel writer and speaker, a qualified angelic Reiki master teacher, and advanced theta teacher, as well as a one command practitioner. I got the breath here, <laughs> and rainbow <laughs> children teacher. Quite a lot of got log CV there. Previously, she was the editor of a national holistic magazine, and now she's a uh, founder of a cutting edge new healing system called Precious Wisdom. And you can find out more about that on alexandrawenman.com. So, um, Alex, welcome to you. Hi, Steve. How you doing? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm really excited about this thing uh, to, to, to this group here, the Elohim. Um, well, tell me, who are they? Okay. Um, these, oh God. So I just need, want to tell our listeners like what happened when you suggested we do another podcast because yeah. it was like the words fell out of my mouth before I could stop myself and it wasn't actually me saying, let's do a podcast on the intergalactic Elohim. And I, and I was like, oh God. I'm not sure I'm ready for this. <laughs> um, these guys, so they, they kind of call themselves the intergalactic and or interdimensional Elohim. And these are, to my knowledge, I can't find anything about them online. I don't think anyone else so far has, um, well, spoken about them or written about them in the way that they've come through to me. That doesn't mean to say it hasn't been written about before, but they're sort of they're, they're, I don't know if I can call them angels or concepts. Like it's sort of, there's a bit of a, a, a crossover here. They kind of seem to represent different levels of consciousness to me. Um, the way I, I began to experience them was in 2012, at the end of 2012, I went on a, a retreat to Egypt with Stuart Pierce. And this was around the time all my precious wisdom information was coming through. And I'd been channeling a lot of the higher galactic council staff and the celestial kind of guardian um things and um guides and i i was predominantly an angel healer and an angel channel so i felt like my work was taking me away from the angels and it was making me feel a bit sad i don't know like human me was like but i miss my angels like where are they and does this mean am i just like a galactic channel now like does uh, am i still an angel healer is this, have i still got this connection and um and yes, of course, they never leave, but it's just whether, where you are in your awareness, I suppose, as to whether or not you can tune into them. But on, uh, on I think it was on the 20th of December, which was the day before the the, the big winter solstice, the big great shift, as it, as it as it's um, popularly called, um, we were in the Great Pyramid at Giza. We privately hired the Great Pyramid and we did a sort of activation and ceremony in the Great Pyramid. And I each of us got to lie down in the red granite sarcophagus in the Great Pyramid. And when I lay down in the sarcophagus, it was like I got taken out of my body. I, I, I know I wasn't out of my body, but it was like I got taken up and out of my body through the apex of the Great Pyramid in this golden shaft of light up through it felt like up through Orion and then it was like worlds and worlds and worlds were opening up around me and it was almost like a spherical they were like spheres it was like they kind of parted all these spheres and I could see curved edges and I just kept cut kept kind of going and that's happened to me a few times and then that was quite an extraordinary um experience because it kind of felt like these it felt like it was beyond our universe. It felt like other universes almost opening up or other realms. Um, and it was so vast. And, um, when we got back to, we were staying in Luxor in a hotel. When we got back to Luxor, we, there were four of us that sat up all night in our hotel room, giggling our heads off because our vibration was so high and all this amazing stuff was happening on the plane back from, Cairo to Luxor that evening, I was just meditating and I could feel all these beings around me, different beings and particularly Lyran beings. And then when we got back to Luxor, we were, we just went and sat outside to look at the stars and a whole group of us could actually see physical craft like darting around in the sky above us. So it was already very high vibration. I feel like we were very uh, connected with our fifth dimensional consciousness at that time. It was like we were permanently in it while we were there. And if anyone's been to Egypt, like the temples are like spaceships in themselves. They're all like 
star temples and we'd been going to every temple in the lead up to the Great Pyramid. So it was like my consciousness had been expanding and expanding and expanding and this experience had been building. And then I don't know what time of morning it was. It must have been in the very wee hours of morning. We were all absolutely killing ourselves laughing, just being idiots. And then someone asked the question, oh, I wonder when the great cosmic moment is. And I heard a voice say, it's now. And one of the girls in our group had a pendulum. My friend Lorraine, she was holding her pendulum. She got it out to ask the question. And as I said, I I think I actually said, the time is now. (laughs) And the pendulum stopped dead still in that moment. And the next thing I know, all of us were looking at each other wide eyed and the vibration just went up like, I don't even know what you would call it, like a thousand other notches. We just felt this rush of energy all go through our bodies. We were tingling from head to toe. It was like um, just an absolute rush of pure love. And it was, it was, it was like the whole world opened up for me in that moment. It was like everything flashed before my eyes and I could see where People had played roles in my life that may not have been so nice to me, but I could see where it was a blessing. It was holographic in a second, all this like life flashing before my eyes kind of moment. And then I had this incredible vision. I could see the curve of the earth and I could see sort of above the, <clears throat> above the earth's atmosphere. It was like a portal opened. It was like a spherical portal of light opened into the earth and all these I could only call them angels. All these angels came flooding in. And the sense I got, the the information I was being given was that these angels, whatever these angels were, had never before this moment been available to earth or we were not able to connect with them. So whatever was going on on the earth had opened this portal, presumably the great shift or the end of the Mayan calendar, whatever you want to call it. This was, this was a moment in time. And they're telling me now it was because of a planetary alignment as well. But what the energy on the planet did, what, what happened in this moment was that it allowed humanity's consciousness to raise to uh, the right kind of, I guess, vibration or frequency so that our our minds were now able to hold the what these angels or these Elohim represent. And then it became sort of over the course of the next, I suppose it was about five days left on the trip at this stage, or four, four or five days left on the trip at this stage, and I just sort of felt like I was sort of embodying these angels. And they came through one by one over the days, and they gave me their names and it really kind of, it really threw me because I'm used to angels and I work a lot with the archangels and I'm used to them having very Hebrew names. And most of the archangels end in EL, um, which is a term that kind of means in, in some way of God. And so each of the angels, if you think about it, they're really, they really represent aspects of ourselves and they're to do with our own connection with God or with our divine self. So when you kind of say Michael or Mikael, it's God protects the actual phonetic sound of the name, the ancient Hebrew language invokes that energy within you. And it's kind of, you can look at it from a physics perspective as well, that you're invoking that energy. So whether or not, you know, there's some schools of thought that say, right, well, angels aren't these beings that fly in and rescue us. They're not external to us. They are actually an aspect or of our relationship with God. There's a really cool physicist. um, I think his name's Dan Winter. Um, which Christine Kaur told me about years ago. And he, if you watch him on YouTube, he's really cool. He actually shows how angels are mathematically quantifiable because if you had like one side of a triangle representing God and the other side representing you, the angel would be the angle or the ratio in the middle, the actual angle in the middle. But anyway, these guys, the, um, the in, they call themselves intergalactic and interdimensional Elohim and they represent, to my knowledge, they represent other dimensions, but also other higher states of consciousness, which in effect are the same as other dimensions because we are the universe. We are the center of our universe. And, but the thing that struck me about them was that their names just sounded a bit like gobbledygook to me. Like they, they didn't, they sounded some sort of sounded a bit Hebrew, but sort of sounded a little bit of a mixture and they all end in 
ah or er instead of eo except for one the first one is an angel by the name of adnakiel and adnakiel is known as the pioneer angel and the angel of new horizons and he seems to be the gateway and then i got i kept getting this image of if you've ever seen the kabbalistic tree of life and the 10 spheres of the tree of life it's like when you get to the top of that tree it starts again and again and again and again and it doesn't stop it keeps going so it's a bit like jacob's ladder and what they were telling me was basically that you know the first kind of level of the tree of life this is my understanding of it i d- i haven't studied kabbalah except in my own kind of um practice i don't i haven't kind of done any courses in it but my understanding of it is that the tree of life that we're aware of is it, it's coming from our perspective as human beings and then each of the spheres is the path back to the divine self from the human earthly kingdom perspective what these guys seem to be saying is that once we reach the knowledge or we awaken to the knowledge that we are not human <laughs> that we are more than human and that many of us are actually star seeds and that we are galactic when you get to the galactic level of consciousness this is where adnakiel the pioneer who's the first kind of angel on this sort of spectrum of angels that have come through he opens embodying him or or tuning into that pioneering aspect when you're aware of yourself as actually a galactic being and you become part of a galaxy as opposed to the earth then you can access these higher states of consciousness and these higher realms and like i've been through and the wording they gave me so the names of them like you've got adnakiel who was the first one and the it was i think it was on the 21st of december on the actual 21st of December we did a little ceremony a little heros gamos marriage of divine feminine and masculine in the Luxor temple and we were having dinner and in the middle of having dinner i just felt this angel it, i i want to say it stepped in but it rose up within me and i just became huge and i've had i think i've spoken about this with you before where i've had experiences like this with metatron and with melchizedek and this was a similar experience but i felt so incredibly grounded in my in on the earth but i became so vast and the vision i had was i could see over a a horizon and the color was kind of a reddy brown earthy kind of color but I was very aware that I was kind of looking over the horizon of our universe. It wasn't a horizon like anything I've seen, and I felt so incredibly huge. I was still kind of aware of what was going on around me, and I heard Stuart look at Lorraine and say, "Oh my god, look at Alex. She's totally out of her body." <laughs> it was quite funny, but so this was the the first one, and then over the next few days they came through. So the names are like um uh, what have we got? We've got Barukata. Um, and this was something to do with, um, it was talking to me about kind of the, the cosmic sort of cosmic mind or cosmic ether or something. And then we've got Sakaria, which is like cosmic form. I'm not even going to try to understand what they're talking about because to me, it's about feeling it. And it's about, um, it's about feeling through your, through your heart and a lot of them are like some of the the later the later ones down the list are like it's sound resonance frequency light illumination radiation cosmic heart cosmic soul um and all the way to like the 13th um is kind of what we would call the prime creator of our universe so what they told me is that they are um Oh this is the other thing this is the incredible thing so the night after the night of the adnakiel experience as i was going to bed and we were in a, a five star hotel in luxor with big heavy blackout curtains so my room was pitch black and i have really poor eyesight i wear a prescription of about minus 5.75 so i can't see in the distance okay so this was quite incredible and i was going to sleep, but I was vibrating at such a high rate. Like I was just wired. It felt like I'd had a hundred cups of coffee. And as I was falling asleep, sort of lying there going, why can't I sleep? And sort of trying to sleep, tossing and turning. And then I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to sit up. And I opened my eyes and I sat up and hovering at the foot of my bed was this ginormous, brilliant, bright red orb 
and it was probably it was bigger than a beach ball it was probably about a meter maybe even a meter and a half in diameter and it was pulsating and breathing and hovering and it was it was brilliant it was glowing red and i have no idea how in that pitch black room it it sort of was there but it it looked like when you can see a a human cell under a microscope and you can see sort of all the mitochondria and the bits the kind of organic material within that cell i could see details like that in it it was like a huge cell but it was made of like and i kind of thought you know i was like really like I'm not dreaming. My eyes were open. I could physically see it. And I sort of felt it was a presence of some kind. And I can't really fully remember um, the exact message that came through at that time, though I did ask for the message again yesterday, and, I, and, I, and I'd like to read the message um, yes, please. now because it's really interesting and um, it, will, it will go some way towards explaining what these Elohim represent and who they are. But the, the, the way the message began was exactly the same. And they said, we come to you as the collective of the intergalactic and interdimensional Elohim. And then yesterday, as I sat down, I went, right, can you please remember, the, tell me the message? Cause I didn't write it down at the time. And I remember it just, I wasn't in a place to make sense of it back then. And for four years, it's kind of been incubating and I've been mulling it over and now I get it. Now I think I get it. So this is what came through yesterday. We come to you as the collective of the intergalactic and interdimensional Elohim. A bridge has now opened to make it possible for us to connect with humanity. Prior to this moment, the vibration of Earth was too dense and people were not expanded enough in their consciousness even to begin to comprehend our existence. We are what you would call angels in the traditional sense as we are aspects of the divine and indeed archetypes of creation. But to simplify, we are essentially creator gods of neighboring dimensions and universes. We exist many worlds from you, and yet we walk beside you. We are here to assist in the great awakening of this planet. Infinite realms abound, and your human mind can comprehend but a tiny portion of what in reality is infinite. This must be felt to be experienced. You think you connect to your consciousness through your brain. This is only partly true. You connect to your consciousness through your heart. Your heart is the portal. We are here in service and we are at your service. Our names hold sacred phonetic keys, which when spoken dissolve the veils of illusion that humanity has kept itself imprisoned within for eons. It begins with being open to the possibility that you are more than you think you are. It begins with your curiosity. It begins with a willingness to go beyond logic and frolic in the playground of the seemingly absurd. What is nonsensical to you makes perfect sense to us. Language is the key that opens the door beyond this reality. The language of nonsense is, in fact, derived from the greater concept of the language of light. Words hold power. Sound holds light and crosses space and time in less than an instant. Whatever defies your logic actually helps you to grow. If it doesn't make sense to the logical mind, that is a good thing. For that is when you learn to drop into your heart and your emotional awareness. What feels right in your heart is the right way. Feel your way forward through this heart mind. Watch your words. Your words open doorways within your heart. Which doorways would you like to create? Doorways to bliss or doorways to pain? Hear our names, speak our names, sing our names, and we shall hold the doors to the divine open for you. But be warned, only the pure of heart may enter. If you double in higher states of consciousness out of greed or the need to control others, great will be the fall. The karma now playing out on this planet 
is the result of the actions of those who have attempted to misuse the secret codes of power gifted to this realm in ancient times. They are few in number, and yet the results of their greed will be catastrophic for the world of blindness they have built up around them. Do not be afraid, for this is a great blessing and will lead to freedom for all. The time is now. Behind the veil lies a truth beyond your current comprehension, but only one of you needs to unlock it for the rest to reap the rewards. This is the Holy Grail. This is the Ark of the Covenant. This is Jacob's Ladder. This is Shambhala. This is Utopia. This is all there is. It is really so simple. Seek. Go on seeking, and surely you shall find. It begins with you. It is not separate from you. Worlds within worlds, universes within universes, realms within realms. How vast you are, and yet how tiny you keep yourselves. Awaken and expand into your vastness. Awaken into love. Our hearts go with you. Our song vibrates through you. The way is open. The time is now. It is written. And that was just that was just yesterday morning at about exactly this time, pretty much. And then as soon as I finished uh, typing that up, and I oh God, I can feel it. It's like my vibrations just shot up a hundred. No, it's amazing. It's amazing as well. It's amazing. And then I I kind of then I got in the shower, and then this. I cannot even describe kind of what happened. It was like, I I think it was language of light, but I started speaking this language that it wasn't really a language. It was like a vibra. It was, it was frequency. It was sound. It was vibration. My mouth was making all these strange kind of shapes The the sounds coming through me were like, there was, it was like, I could hear all different languages. I could hear like, what sounded like elements of Chinese, Hebrew, Sanskrit, like all different kinds of phonetic sounds. And then some of them were just weird kind of primal sounds coming from my throat. And I've heard it. I've heard it done before. I've heard language of light before. And I know of people who channel it. And when we were in Egypt, while this was all going on with me channeling these angels, this, uh, this gorgeous girl called Laura was actually speaking in tongues like this. And what was amazing is that she didn't really know what she was saying, but I could understand every word she was saying. And so, and I never wrote any of it down. I can't believe I didn't actually record it. It was ridiculous. Um, but such profound, beautiful things along the lines of what, what, what I've just read. Mm. And when I kind of got back, I, again, the logical brain, they say, forget logic. It doesn't, don't shoehorn it into the logical mind. This is about feeling it. So just let the frequencies come over you. It doesn't matter what you're saying. You're receiving whatever you need to receive. And it's more than you could ever consciously comprehend. And But I did. I did come back and I did start trying to research all their names and what their names kind of meant. And what was, is amazing is that some of them are actually Hebrew words, but some of them are a a combination of Hebrew and Sanskrit and some of the really ancient languages. It's like amazing. Mm. Um, So I I don't know. I think language of light kind of draws from all the sacred phonetic kind of sounds of all languages, but even more than that, like we will never, you know, I don't even think we'll grasp it in this lifetime. I mean, they say, they say to us, you know, you're just, you're just, you know only a speck of the whole and like to them our universe is like a grain of sand in many grains of sand the universe there's so many universes there's so many realms beyond this the being that um i've connected with which um i I know to be called well i refer to as prime creator is um sort of like our concept of god but to me it's this unbelievable being of light that kind of shines if you could say that a being shines with the light of 10,000 suns Mm. this is this being and I've connected with this being um, who's the kind of the creator god of our universe and um, it's sort of like um, 
God, if you could call it an ultra terrestrial being, I think is the word, something like that. I don't know. It's it's so incredibly vast and just this being of light. But this, like when I see, it's like I go and you go, you kind of access it. I access it through my heart, up through the sun and then up through what's called the great central sun. And then it just opens out, and it is exactly as they said, worlds within worlds within worlds, and it's spherical. I see spheres opening out, almost like the flower of life, but in 3D. And um, what I love about this is that the scientists are now catching up. There's, There's so much being written now about these other dimensions and other states of consciousness. There was even something in the Metro last year about the multiverse, and how scientists agree there's other universes beyond this. And the, the what I love about this language thing that they've been telling me about is that this one of the um, this lovely, brilliant man, Raymond Moody, who's the world's leading expert on near-death experiences, is now doing all these studies on language and particularly the language of nonsense. And he's actually talking at it, coming at it from a kind of a more scientific point of view where you can you can kind of tell when somebody's in between dimensions as they're about to leave their body as they're about to leave the planet because a lot of them talk in what sounds like nonsensical gibberish mm. but they're actually there are no words to describe where they are or where they're going mm. it's like they're just tapping into these higher realms these higher states of consciousness well, um, alex i can feel them around you know and i'm just wondering um if I could tempt you to connect with them and to see if they want to say something or even just transmit something. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's tune in. Let me see if they, if they have a message now for everybody. Okay. So they just want everybody to breathe. Breathe into your heart. Breathe into your heart. Let your heart be the doorway to your divine self. We are not separate from you. We are you. Our names are your names. Our vibration is your vibration. Our song is your song. You feel so limited, but you are not limited at all. It is an illusion. The body you inhabit is not a box that you are trapped in. And like liquid flowing into a cup, you can overflow this physical vessel and stream your energy out to wherever you need to go. And as the droplets of your energy flow outwards, they connect to the energy of other beings and All of this is connected in one great ocean of souls that is the oneness of all. And the essence of love is what allows you to do this freely. Love is the portal and the gateway and the corridor that allows you to travel that allows you to connect, that allows you to open your world. Because when you, in very simple human terms, when you rest in the safety of love, knowing that you are loved, that you are made of love, and that everyone around you is made of love as well, then you let go of feeling unsafe. Many of you are experiencing limitation out of a fear of wanting to protect yourself or keep yourself limited for fear of attack, for fear of 
comparison or greed or grabbing mentality for fear that what you have as your own gifts can be taken from you. In truth, nothing can ever be taken from you. Because you are limitless. There is a new way evolving through your planet now. So many of you are waking up and this is different to how you thought it was going to be. Many of you are experiencing very deep karma at this time. Many of you are experiencing your shadow and many of you are feeling quite shocked and frightened that your shadow is darker and denser than you thought it was. This is because it has remained hidden because in consciousness you were not ready to face those levels of darkness. But it is a byproduct that when you face higher levels of light and you open to greater love, you also open the door to its counterpart. But we ask you not to go into self-judgment. We ask you to stay in self-love unconditional love is love without judgment and this begins with you there is nothing that could that you could have ever done thought said or experienced that will diminish you in the eyes of the divine and of your divine self unconditional love is neither good nor bad it is only your human perception that deems it so We ask you to walk the fine line of love between your light and your shadow, acknowledging both. In this human existence, you are being called to choose love, to choose light. But you must respect your shadow and the lessons that it has brought to you on this journey. You will not heal your shadow by running from it. You will not heal your shadow by blocking it out. You will not heal your shadow by denying its existence. And the same goes for the whole planet. What has remained hidden is coming to the fore and everybody must acknowledge it. But we are standing firm and resolute in our guidance. Do not go into fear. If you must, switch off the news and meditate on love. Do not be dragged into drama. Your perception creates your reality and this is true in many ways. You haven't got the full measure of what this actually means yet. So many of you are running around manifesting material objects and things like that. Hold your planet in the light. See miraculous solutions unfolding. Send healing where it is needed and trust that it is being received. Trust that every person is on the right path for them. You are not here to go into rescue mode. Rescue mode implies that there is something wrong. In truth, everything is as it should be. Trust the process. Hold every human being, every fellow being, and every being in every reality, in light, in love see the highest aspects of this reality. If you can dream it, you can do it. Do not be afraid of judgment from those who have not yet woken up because they too will be going through this process sure enough and soon enough. No one can escape it. Those who are not ready in this lifetime will leave the planet.
We wish to say to you that there is so much love surrounding you. There is so much support. You are never alone. In those moments where you feel your support is gone, that is where your support is most here. But your emotions can sometimes cloud your connection. Stay grounded. No matter what happens, stay grounded. Stay in your body. Love and honor your body. It is through the world of matter that your soul is learning to grow. You chose to come into this body. You chose to come into this life. You chose all of your experiences and your higher self knows that. If something hasn't gone your way, bless it. For it is yet another lesson on your path of growth. And what they're asking me to do now is to read their names, is to recite their names. And I'm just going to ask if everyone, I'm just going to say their names three times and if everyone can just kind of soak in the resonance of, of the names. In fact, I think I'm going to chant the names. I think this would be right. Adna Kia Barukata Zakaria.
Adnakia Barukata Zakaria vibration and feel the walls of illusion dissolving around you and these Elohim say that you can listen to this recording as often as you need to and every time you listen to their names more and more veils of illusion will gently be dissolved away and this will happen at a rate that is comfortable for each of you and really sit in your feeling body, your feeling awareness, feel the vibration of these names, feel the vibration of this message. Come out of your mind and into your heart at any given moment. You are learning a new way of life. You are learning a new way to be. Your logical mind just will go round and round in circles trying to find solutions. But it's so limited. We have a tiny little frame of reference from our human personality perspective. But the heart knows Feel through your heart. Old structures are going to start breaking down. Some of you may even experience it as though your whole world is collapsing around you. Stay in self-love. Do not doubt yourself. Do not be mean to yourself. Be loving to yourself because the cavalry isn't coming. You are your saviour. You are the one you've been waiting for. And we are not even outside of you. We are part of you. And as you open up into higher levels of awareness, that is where you will more easily connect to us because we reside in those higher levels and states of consciousness. Breathe, meditate, receive, and love. It is so simple. Oh, wow. Okay, so that was quite extraordinary. (laughs) (laughs) I thought, shall I put you on the spot? But I got a yes internally when I asked. So I thought, oh, okay, it's all right. Yeah, it was, I think it was needed because I'm not sure I would would have put my hand up for that. (laughs) Alex, thank you so much. That was an amazing message and uh, beautiful. And uh, I'm going to, 
look forward to hearing more about this. Yeah, I think now that they're now that I've I've kind of thank you, Steve, as well, because for helping me get comfortable with it. Um, and for, yeah, for putting me on the spot. Well, they put me on the spot the other day as well. Um, but, uh, what was I going to say? I, yeah, I think, um, I think I'm, I've, I've written, um, this message up, so I'm going to put it on my website. So if people want to reread, um, the message as well, and obviously I'll share this podcast on my website too. And, um, yeah, I, I think I'm thinking they need, they need more writing about now. Yeah. Could be a book. I think it's a book. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that. Yeah. yeah so the, the, the message needs to come through for sure. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, and I just, I feel like I need, I want to get in touch with um, Raymond Moody as well about what he's doing with the language of nonsense because it's something that, you know, Doctor Zeus knew about, um, you know, Lewis Carroll knew about it. They knew, they knew this stuff. You know, it, it was all to do with like children's nursery rhymes have stayed that way for centuries because they are actually about, it's about teaching, you know, your imagination to expand. Yeah. It's really clever. Well, Alex, thank you so much. I look forward to, let's meet up and have tea again and uh, let's keep the conversation going. Love to, Steve. Absolutely loving this. And um, thank you so much for your amazing work and your amazing support in, in getting all this stuff out there as well. And I'm loving all your podcasts. I love everyone else's work as well and connecting with people you know i think we're all coming out of the closet in a big way now and it's really good to have that support and to know we've got other brothers and sisters coming out and doing this work so thank you 